Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure and the bonding in polymers. You should then be able to explain why polymers are solids at room temperature. Now there are literally thousands of uses of polymers and I'm showing you a tiny selection here. In this video we're looking at the bonding in polymers, so let's get started. The first key idea that you have to get is that polymers are very large molecules. They're made by joining together thousands of small identical molecules, and we call these identical molecules monomers. Monomers are often alkene molecules, and we're going to find out more about these in the organic chemistry topic. A good example of an alkene is ethene, which I'm showing you here. When we form a polymer, we join together thousands of monomer molecules. So I'm showing this here for ethene. I'm only going to join together five ethene molecules, but this gives you the idea. So this shows the ethene molecules joining together to form the polymer. And in this case, the polymer is called polyethene. Now there are several points about this that you need to learn. Firstly, the monomer has a double carbon-to-carbon -carbon covalent bond. We can see these here. However, the polymer contains single carbon-to-carbon -carbon covalent bonds, and here they are. Remember that because these bonds are covalent, they're extremely strong. Students often ask, what happens at the ends of the polymer molecule? You don't need to know that, and you won't be asked that in the exam. Now there is one problem with drawing a polymer such as this, and that is that there are lots of atoms and covalent bonds to draw, so scientists usually draw it in a shorthand way like this. This is called the repeating unit. There are three important details about the repeating unit that you need to learn. Firstly, remember that it shows a single carbon-to-carbon -carbon covalent bond, and we can see that here. Secondly, the covalent bonds on either side have to extend out of the brackets like this. This tells us that the polymer molecule extends out in both directions. Lastly, the little n here tells us that the polymer contains a very large number of repeating units joined together. n just represents a large number. Okay, we're going to move on now and look at a key property of polymers, which you need to be able to explain. Most polymers are solids at room temperature. That's because the intermolecular forces of attraction between polymer molecules are relatively strong. Now, this sounds a bit tricky, but it's quite straightforward. I'm showing you polymer molecules here. As you can see, we've got a lot of intermolecular forces of attraction acting between the polymer molecules. It takes a lot of energy to break these forces, so that means that polymers have a high melting point. Most polymers are solids at room temperature. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on polymers in my vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. And if you're doing triple chemistry, you're going to be seeing a lot more about polymers in later videos. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the structure and the bonding in polymers. You should then be able to explain why polymers are solids at room temperature. 